Hello, this is Daniel and I'm going electric for the average person coming to you today from rural Northwestern Illinois. Today's topic is going to be how can you squeeze a faster 25 to 33% charge out of a regular at home 110 to 120 volt outlet. Come along for the ride and let's see if we can make your electric life just a little bit better. Welcome back. I'm at my parents' house now. There's a light breeze around, some birds chirping, and some neighbors bopping around, so you might hear some background noise. So I'm making this video today for all of you who find yourselves in one of the following situations or a combination. You have a house that you can't upgrade to a level two charger, or you happen to be traveling and there's no supercharger around, or you're somewhere visiting friends and there's no level two charger around. Now, in my case, uh, I am in the middle of driving from San Francisco around the entire country. I've been out to Florida, uh, up to Chicago, out to DC, down to Texas, and everywhere in between. And I've seen a lot of different ways to charge. Now, while I'm staying with my parents here, they are on 110, 120 electricity. They don't have a level two charger. Uh, their house cannot upgrade to a level two charger, apparently, unless they redid their electrical panel box or whatever that is. And so I'm here with 110. There is a supercharger about 45 miles away, but driving that takes about an hour. And it seems a little crazy to like burn the energy to drive to a supercharger, charge up, burn the energy to come back. And then you have to make sure you have enough energy to get back there. It's just, it's crazy. So I'm learning to live on 110, 120. I actually came out and visited my parents a couple months ago and I made a video episode 19 about charging at home. Uh, check that out if you want to learn about 120 charging on a regular NEMA 515 uh, outlet. This video is actually going to focus on an astute observation by a viewer of that video. Uh, when I was showing some of the screenshots of my dad's garage, he like mentioned in the comments, he's like, hey, I see that you have a NEMA 520 uh, receptacle outlet in the garage, that means that you should be able to get faster charging. I had no idea what he was talking about. And it turns out when I did a fair amount of research that if you get the right equipment, which is not much to get, you should be able to charge. If you have this NEMA 520 outlet in your garage or even in your kitchen, you should be able to charge at about 25 to 33% faster than you would on a regular normal uh, NEMA 5-15 outlet. There are four adapters I'm gonna be talking about today, and my mom has kindly volunteered to make her YouTube model debut as an adapter model. So you'll see her as I talk about each of the adapters. The first adapter is a NEMA 5-15, and this is the adapter that virtually everyone in North America has in their house. The second adapter is the one that we're gonna want from this video, which is a NEMA 5-20. And you may have one of these in your kitchen or your garage. The third adapter is a NEMA 6-20, which is exactly what you don't want. I ordered this because it looked just like the previous adapter and it was a mistake. And the fourth adapter is the NEMA 1430, which Tesla sent me mistakenly and I had to send it back before I could get the correct NEMA 5-15. So if you want to learn more about the NEMA standard, just head over to Wikipedia. They've got a really great site with tons of good information there. Also, I did consult an electrician, a certified electrician in the area here. So hopefully the information I give you in this video is legit. Uh, don't take any advice from me. Do all your research and consult the professionals. I am going to do two tests today, though, and this is going to focus just on speed. The first test is going to focus on charging my car from 40% up to 60% on that regular NEMA 5 dash. 15 outlet and adapter. And then I'm going to charge from 60% to 80% on the new NEMA 5-20 adapter, which theoretically should get me 25 to 33% faster charging. So let's see if that's true. Take a look in your garage and see if you have a NEMA 520 outlet installed. It's the one with the perpendicular blade on the left. If you do, simply remove the NEMA 515 adapter from the wall, remove it from the corded mobile connector, and then you can take a look at the NEMA 520 adapter, which has the perpendicular blade on the right, which is opposite from the one on the wall. Be careful when you go shopping. Then you plug in the NEMA 520 adapter into the corded mobile connector, and you plug it all back into the wall. Finally, open the charge port and plug in the charge cable like normal. 
Here are a couple screenshots from the Tesla mobile app on my phone. You can see that I started charging at 40% and ended at 60%. Then farther down, you can see that the charging rate is listed as one kilowatt, although Tesla doesn't show decimals. That's unfortunate. And then you can also see it started charging at 118 volts and ended up at 115 volts. Then you can see that the whole time it was charging at 12 amps. Finally, we can calculate the time it took to charge by looking at the timestamps in the upper left-hand corner of each screenshot. I used the 24-hour clock on my phone. I started charging at 12.46 a.m. and finished charging at 1.13 p.m. That is roughly 12.5 hours. Also, you can ignore that charging 24 plus hour remaining note because that's what it would have taken to charge all the way up to something like 93%, which I didn't do. Finally, running a whole bunch of fancy mathematics that I won't bore you with, we get a charging rate of 1.15 kilowatts. That's a whole lot slower than the typical 6 to 14 kilowatts you get from a level 2 charger, and certainly not even comparable to a supercharger at 70 to 135 kilowatts. But hey, it's better than a stick in the eye. Let's take a look at those NEMA 520 numbers now. Before I do though, there are two articles that I think you should check out. I'll include the links in the video description. The first article is by Automobile Magazine and it's titled, Learn to Speak EV. And then there's a second article by Eaton UPS Systems titled, The Difference Between Amps Versus Volts Versus Watts. It's also a pretty simple summarization of the difference between all of those. With all those amps, volts, and watts in mind, let's start test number two. Taking a look at the Tesla app screenshots here, you can see that this first NEMA 520 adapter test took roughly 10 hours to get from 60% to 80%. Assuming I have a usable battery capacity of 72 kilowatt hours, running some math, we can see that we have an average charge rate on the NEMA 520 adapter of 1.5 kilowatts. Humorously, Tesla lists this very aspirationally as 2 kilowatts instead of 1.5 kilowatts. That decimal point matters. Comparing charging from the two separate adapters, the time difference is 12.5 hours versus 10 hours, which means the NEMA 520 adapter is 25% faster. To ensure that the results from charging from 60% to 80% weren't a fluke, I did a third test. I went for a nice long rainy drive out to the Mississippi River and depleted the battery down to 12%. I then took snapshots and intervals from 12% to 40%, 40% to 60%, 60% to 80%, and then finally, 80% up to 90%. In this picture from the center display, you can see that I've now reached 90%, although it's still showing me five minutes remaining to get up to the top of 90%. You can also see that very aspirational two kilowatt charging rate, which is really 1.5, and then also that I've attained 57 kilowatt hours of energy. And you can ignore where it says supercharging in the lower right-hand corner. That's from the most recent supercharging session. Let's take a look at this nifty little table I made. Across the top, we've got battery percentage, we've got time, volts, amps, the estimated kilowatt charging rate, which is volts times amps. We also have kilowatt hours added into the battery. Keep in mind, kilowatts is the rate and kilowatt hours is the amount of energy you get. They're not the same. And then also the actual observed kilowatt charging rate that I got, which is different from that theoretical estimated column. You can pause this screen if you want to take a deep dive look at the numbers, but long story short, it took just over 38 hours to charge the battery. You can see that the volts range around 110 to 113, amps were steady at 16, and then the actual observed kilowatt charging rate is less than what the rated charging rate is. So keep that in mind, even though you may run the numbers and say, wow, this 520 adapter or a 515 adapter should be capable of XYZ, it's actually gonna come in less than that because electrical systems don't ever max out when they're sending electricity through and the car also doesn't max out when it's receiving it. So I'm gonna do a little theoretical comparison between episodes 19 and episodes 29 to compare my 12 to 90% charge from this video versus the rate I was getting in episode 29. So that rate on a NEMA 515, I was getting, as you can see in that calculation just below, about 1.1 kilowatts as my charge rate. And that took me a total of 51 hours to charge the car. In the NEMA 520 at a 1.5 kilowatt rate, it only took me 38 hours. That's a full 13 hours faster, an improvement of 25%. 
This next table is not a comparison between a 515 and a 520 adapter. Rather, it's a comparison of a 515 theoretical charge rate to itself compared to its observed charge rate. Now, in the case of the NEMA 515, if you just multiply 15 amps by 120 volts, you get a theoretical charge rate of 1.8 kilowatts. Likewise, if you multiply 20 amps by 120 volts, you get a theoretical charge rate of 2.4 kilowatts. In fact, the observe rate is 38% less on both the NEMA 515 and NEMA 520 adapters. So as you're looking around the market at various adapters you can plug into your car, understand that that top rated number is not going to match what you actually observe when you plug it in and charge your car. The reason for that is that in practice, the amps are going to be rolled down to 12 for the NEMA 515 adapter and down to 16 for the NEMA 520 adapter, plus charging inefficiencies. So what does this all mean? If you're charging your car because you plan on driving around 75 miles per hour that day or 55 miles per hour that day, what you can see is based on a typical efficiency rating of 331 watt hours per mile at 75 miles per hour versus 214 watt hours per mile at a lower speed of 55 miles per hour, using this NEMA 520 adapter, you should be able to get about 4.5 to 7 miles an hour of charge. And for comparison, a NEMA 515 adapter would result in 25% fewer miles charged per hour. And for my amazing viewers around the world who use the metric system, the numbers work out to 7.3 kilometers to 11 kilometers per hour. So what are the takeaways from this video? I would say there are three. Takeaway number one is, depending on how you position the numbers relative to which number, you could say that getting a NEMA 520 adapter would result in a 33% faster charge. I prefer to use the smaller number in order to not over -height things. All of you number nerds, uh, please state your positions in the comments below and let me know which number you think we should use. But in my opinion, if you get the NEMA 520 adapter, you will see a 25% faster charge. So you should get that adapter. Takeaway number two, go to tesla.com right now and buy the NEMA 520 adapter. Takeaway number three, use it. However, a little caveat here, if you're at someone's house and you see a NEMA 520 outlet, please consult your host before you just plug in. Using a NEMA 520 adapter will draw about 1,500 watts of steady draw off of their electrical system for as long as you saw in the video here. Now, that's basically like having a high power microwave on for the entire time. A lot of modern houses can support that, but an older house may not. Just check with your host and make sure that their electrical system can support it. But this adapter can result in faster charging, and everybody wants faster charging. So best of luck to us all as we go electric, and I'll see you next time.